All right, thank you so much, technical team. Now, uh, Ms. Inez, the floor is yours. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Aisha. Um, my topic for today is youth fighting biases and making a difference. All right, so first off, just a short introduction about myself. My name is Inas, and growing up, I learned about the Millennium Development Goals by the United Nations, which is when I first started learning about the initiatives that the United Nations is taking for a better world for us. And now I'm currently a Clover Guide after receiving the Queen's Guide Award. And I'm very grateful to be able to still work towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. All right. So here's what I'll be covering this morning. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. All right, so first, the importance of youth in promoting SDGs. Secondly, what we can do. And third, past experiences and examples that I've been fortunate enough to take part in working towards the SDGs. All right, so without further ado, why are the youth so important in working towards the SDGs? I have three points here, but there are definitely a lot more points on why the youth are so important for this. But first, I'll be talking about developing leaders of the future. So when the youth contributes our ideas and energy towards working against the issues that we have in this world, we begin to see ourselves as capable leaders who can make important contributions to help the world. So we, who, the youth who might otherwise feel inferior academically or socially, will realize that our unique strengths are very important in helping the world. So these empowering effects spill over and we will retain our motivation to help others even when we grow up. So the future will have very passionate leaders about the sustainable development goals. Secondly, um, the youth is very important to provide an important perspective for everybody working towards the sustainable development goals because the youth has very different experiences from the adults. So you often experience issues like gender inequality and discrimination differently than how adults face them in the workforce and in the outside world. So this perspective is critical in creating, in making decisions to create a difference. Thirdly, the youth is important to give open and honest feedback on the programs implemented. So currently United Nations and adults and organizations plan a lot of programs for the youth. But without the feedback of the youth, we won't really know what impact or if the program is actually making a positive impact on the youth specifically. All right, next. This is just a figure from the United Nations on the youth as a share of the total, of the total population by region in 2015. So as you can see, this is not even inclusive of under 15 year old um, youth. And this is such a large percentage. So this is self-explanatory on why the youth is so important in working towards the SDGs. All right, so now what can we do? Um, I put here as a note just to follow your heart. So take note of the causes that we feel for and think of the impacts we wanna make. And we don't have to follow what other people have done before this in making a difference. Okay, so here are just some points. First, stay true to yourself. So don't feel accustomed to the current um, organizations and programs that are implemented. Always have some of element of yourself in the programs that you implement, and that will make it a lot more unique and bring a lot more different dimensions to the SDGs. Next is dare to dream big. Never feel that what you're planning is too big for you to achieve because anything is possible. But obviously stay within the realms of reality and realize what restrictions we have, especially during COVID. Um, restrictions like not being able to do it physically, you know, there's a lot of ways to adapt to the situations that we have. Next, remember that no effort is too small. So whether it's fundraising or having online campaigns, every small effort makes a big difference. All right, so this is from the United Nations World Youth Report, Youth and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and they gave some suggestions on how to build strong youth policies. So this is more directed towards youth in policymaking, but I felt like, I feel like it can be implemented in just any youth organization. So first they said a strong youth policy is usually, is very importantly evidence-based. 
So strong youth policies are informed by the accurate data and statistics from young people and gathered from many different means, such as um, household surveys and evidence provided by youth ourselves. Next, a strong youth policy or organization or program is participatory. So strong youth policies would require strong youth input. So yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory. Next, a strong youth policy is integrated and cross-sectoral. So it should be cross-sectoral and this is um, more directed towards the policies that we have. So care should be taken to ensure that the youth policy objectives and outcome are compatible with the current policies that we already have in place. Next, strong youth policies are funded. So we always have to think about the budget and how we're going to achieve because everything nowadays, we need money for everything. So we have to plan that out properly. Um, next, the youth, we should be committed in our projects and not just do it half-heartedly so that we can execute a good project. And next, we have to be accountable and transparent in the projects that we implement, especially if it requires a lot of fundraising because people want to know where their funds are going. Okay. Um, next. I will be sharing about past experiences and examples of some of the youth implemented pro pro programs that are happening in our community today. Um, and some which I have been fortunate enough to take a part in. All right, so first working towards sustainable cities and communities, we have the Sri Aman Environmental Youth Leadership Summit. So this was founded by Farhana Adamale in 2012 and is an annual um, summit that is planned fully by the youth in Sri Aman. So it's a girls school in Petaling Jaya and it's been happening for over a decade now, which is really amazing. Yeah. So not just, we don't just work towards goal 11, but also we strive to promote goal 12 responsible consumption and production, and goal 13, climate action. Here are some photographs from the summit. So as you can see, we invite delegates from all around the globe, and it takes a lot of effort for us to plan this event. We have, we have delegates from countries like Thailand, Denmark, sorry, Japan, China, Indonesia, Laos, and more. Um, and as you can see, it's a five-day event where we where we bring them to attractions around Kuala Lumpur and Petaling Jaya, such as Pasar Seni, Sangui Lagoon, and more. So not just do we work towards the SDGs, but we also have cultural exchange, where we learn more about each other's cultures and unique heritage, which is very important in playing a part towards learning more about what's happening globally and learning from what other youth are doing and implementing them in our own community. Next, working towards quality education, the fourth sustainable development goal is Rakan Future, which is founded by these two youth, which is on a mission to bridge the COVID-19 learning gap in Malaysia. So any, any youth can apply to be a tutor. So I have applied to be a mathematics tutor and it is really great because they realize, especially during COVID, the learning gap that we have and the learning loss that is going on, especially with schools being closed down and everything, and not everybody has the resources to learn online. So it's a really great initiative to give free tutoring to underserved secondary students. And now they have close to 300 tutors and tutees. Next, uh, working towards gender equality, the, the fifth sustainable development goal, I'll be talking about the Girls in STEM Conference that hasn't happened, but it's currently planning from me with the Rotary, Rotary of Bukit Kira Sunrise and the Rotary Club of Bukit Kira Sunrise. So as stated here, studies suggest that girls' disadvantage in STEM is the result of the interaction of a range of factors embedded in both the socialization and learning processes. So this is not something that just happened overnight, but instead I feel like the lack of girl in STEM subjects is very deep rooted and has a history and there are reasons to this. So I read, and I think is a really good resource, is UNESCO's book, which is Cracking the Code, Girls and Women's Education in STEM. And I can include a link here later to read the book. It's on, it's on an online digital library. So yeah, as stated here, girls are often brought up to believe that STEM are masculine topics and that female ability in this field is inferior to that of males, which is not true. The 
Inclusion of women in STEM promotes scientific excellence and boosts the quality of STEM outcome because diverse perspectives equate to more creativity. So here are just some statistics from United Nations, which shows, which proves that there is a lack of females in, there is a, a disproportionate amount of females in STEM subjects. And more of these um, graphs and statistics can be seen in the book that I mentioned earlier. All right. Yeah, that's it for my presentation. And now I will open the floor to questions. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Inez, for your sharing. Now, if you have any questions, you may raise your hands and turn on your mics, or you may uh, type them in the chat box and I'll read them for you. Thank you. I'm so sorry, I can't see. Um, I saw two hands just now, and now I, I'm seeing uh, Mr. Arash's hand. Yes, do you have a question for Ms. Inais? Uh, yes, um, because um, you know, she talked about the ramifications of the pandemic. I was just wondering what other suggestions do you have for initiatives during the pandemic and how to handle it? Well, thank you. That was a great question. Um, so currently with the pandemic, we know it's hard to have physical gatherings and activities. So the sales, I'm going to use, I'm going to be using sales, the something I was talking about earlier as an example. So as we're having it annually, we actually, I mean, I'm not in Sri Aman anymore, but the Sri Aman students now have made it an online summit, which is amazing. It's online on YouTube and you can see participants from all over the globe participating in the competitions that they have which is actually we can use this not as a disadvantage, but use COVID as an advantage for us to invite more participants from all over the globe who have access to internet to join us. And other than the sales example, there's also um, thinking about the stuff that the youth uses now, especially TikTok, which is really famous. I feel like having campaigns on TikTok is a really great way to boost awareness because everyone is on TikTok nowadays. So we might as well use it for something um, productive. Yeah. I hope that answered your question. Thank you. All right, and now um, my clock is showing 11.40 and it is uh, the end of our sharing session for now, I believe. All right, well, we did. Thank you uh, so much. All right, yes, thank you so much, Ines, and thank you to all of our speakers here today.